This is Dr. Luo, my social psychology student. This is how we are going to meet for these two weeks. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, the coronavirus, we won't allow or we're not able to meet in the class. So I will do my best, try to make this call a uh, live class. Okay, so we will miss, uh, we will have a chance to, to learn from each other. Um, so I'm not very good with this. So bear with me with some uh, technological difficulties. Okay, but I uh, think if we are work together, I think we'll be fine, right? Okay, so um, in our class, right? Last time we talked about, um, now we are in the chapter six called the need of, the need to justify our action. Okay, so um, we know we all have to do something in our life, right? Then a lot of time we don't even know what we're doing that. Okay, so after we do something, we kind of say, oh, I wonder, what do I do? And quite often we may find that whatever we do may not match with whatever we want to do or may not match with whatever the society expects us to do. So um, in that moment, we call we are encounter cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance. Okay, you see the you see the term here, right? Cognitive, cognitive distance. Okay. Now, when we encounter cognitive distance, okay, we find it very uncomfortable. Why? Because we want to maintain a stable, positive self-image. We want to feel good about ourselves. We want to feel the way we think who we are, right? So, we are going to do something consciously, unconsciously, right? And to justify what I do the thing, what I do, right? Okay. Now, so this is the, the term, and uh, some of you may find this is more like review. Yes, we review, we, we talk about this, but I thought since this, I made this video, you know, it's good to go from a big a little bit beginning so then you know for some of you did not come to class last time or if you watch this video you are not my student you may get some idea about what are we talk about here okay so this like called the theory of cognitive dissonance right so that's the the definition here the feeling of discomfort caused by performing an action that run counter to one's customary, or we say tri tri uh, typical positive con conception of oneself is referred as cognitive distance. Okay, and they say distance actually is the most powerful and most upsetting when people behave in a way that drain their self image. Right? Do you believe that? Do you agree? I think so, right? Like for example, if I make this video and I later look at it and say, oh, it's not good, then what do I do? I may say, well, I, I do my best, right? Okay, so uh, we all have the moment. So that is called something we do, okay? The first thing we do is here, we say we change our behavior. The second thing we do is, okay, then maybe I don't want to change my behavior. I just change my thinking, right? And the third, I just add another layer. Um, we say self affirmation. Okay, so that means you tell yourself, right? So for example, right? For example, if you you are watching this video right now, right? And then you say. Yes, actually, when I try to make, make this video, I don't know really what to do. So I need to ask around and then our, um, I, 
you know, our our school tell us maybe you make some. You you don't you require you don't require to make a video. You can just do whatever to help student. So I check in around and find hey maybe I can open a account for YouTube. And then when I open account YouTube, I find actually I can record that. So I record that right. And now I'm recording, right? So I'll tell myself, well, if you like this video, well, that's good. If you don't like it, I say, well, at least I try, right? And I believe the more I did, the more I do, I will be better, right? Okay, so three things, everybody. Now I now that you see the PowerPoint, and I know you do have. So the first one, what we we change our behavior so for example if you you smoke and then you see the sign say smoke it is not good for you or let's say coronavirus you should not go out okay you should not travel and then you really want to travel and you go to a place actually people think that's dangerous place right so you you say okay maybe i don't go i cancel the trip or you say i spend too much money Reserve the hotel, Airbnb. I don't want to change. Then what do you do? You uh, you change your thinking. And say, well, maybe, what I won't get it, right? The third will be we call what self affirmation, right? So you say, well, I already do my best. I I think I'm overall I'm a good person. I try, right? So you don't feel you even you trip. You say, well, I maybe help those place have some business because no nobody going to go there. So that's self affirmation, right? Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Okay. So let's back to our PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, so this is just the three things same as the one we just talked about. See this lady, this from your book, right? See this lady say, well, he, she smoke, right? And she see the sign and she can get rid of the cigarette, okay? Or she can uh, think about, well, I won't get it, right? Or she say, well, I'm just relaxing, right? Okay. Then we, in the class, we also talk about the difference between rational and rationalizing, right? So let's say sometimes what's rational behavior, like something logically you do something. Rationalization is rationalizing it mean you do something and you try to find a justification for that okay now a lot of time uh, the reason we so care about our cognitive business is because we believe that that difference will make us very very uncomfortable and here we say actually we are overestimate the intensity and the duration of our emotional reaction uh, to future negative may occur because reducing distance is largely unconscious. So that's called impact bias. You know, with that, if I don't change it, you know, I'll bother you forever, right? Okay. Now, again, we say the reason we, we feel distance because our cell image. So actually, it depends on your cell image. If you are very high self esteem, you maybe have very high expectation on yourself, then you more likely have a higher level of cognitive dissonance. If you don't have a high self esteem, you say, well, I have nothing to lose. I'm not good anyway. Okay. So uh, they have research. I think we, we already showed in the club, but let's review one more time. They say you divide the student into three groups and they are pretty much the same student, but the first group, one third of student, you tell them um, they are very good, right? And the second group, you tell them they are not good. And third group, you don't tell them. Okay, then you put them in the place, actually, um, they are, huh, somehow, they are able to cheat, right? So you may find the what? The people with a... Uh, um, higher level, higher sales team, the third, the first group, you tell them they are very good, they like less likely to cheat. Then the, and the second group, since they know they are not good, they were, they were told they are not good, say they're more likely to cheat. Okay, so for, based on this, I think it's important, um, how do you help people? So, 
you want to change their behavior, then we maybe we can do a change their image, right? Sometimes you keep telling people they are not good, and then you want them to be good. It's very hard, you know. As in the class, we talk about we all like the people they like us, right? So if I I keep telling a student, right, you are very good, right? You are my good student. Then I believe that student more likely to behavior a good, right? So even if the if they come to my office take exam and I have to run away for run some air, I don't think they are going to cheat, right? But if student, it's I, I kind of like tell them they are not good, then. If they're in my office and I'm not there, they may do something, right? So it's important. The lesson here is respect others. And people will more likely to behave the way you respect them. You know, so self-esteem is important uh, to make people feel good. And then they more likely do good behavior so they don't feel cognitive distance. Right? Make sense? Okay, let's back to our PowerPoint here. Okay, so in conclusion, right? If you think you are the um, honest person, then cheating, cheating make them feel uncomfortable, then they will like less likely to cheat, right? Okay, now who is the source of business? Okay, one is come from decision. Okay, how often we need to make decision, right? The school just make decision, big, very big decision, right? Us say we should um, change the class, class online, right? Cancel the face-to-face -face class, right? That's it's big decision. How about your life, right? You make decision to come to university you attend to. You make decision to marry somebody. You make decision to buy a car, right? Okay. Now, after you make decision, here say, every time you make the decision, did you feel, did you experience dizziness? Why? Okay. Actually, we know every decision they always have two sides, right? You know, like you go to OSU, you go to Tiffany University, right? You live in a life for me. I live in America or I live in Taiwan, right? They all have decision. Do I buy blue coach, uh, coach or the the red one, right? Do I buy this dress or that dress, right? And so because that, so when you make decision, you always have to lose. Uh, another side, right? And that side is unknown because you will never experience that side. So, we maybe keep wonder what happened if I marry somebody else. What happened if I buy another car? What happened like for me if I live in Taiwan, right? So um. So it's called post decision business. Okay, so that is business arose after making a decision, typically reduced by enhancing. The attractiveness of the chosen alternative and the evaluating the rejected alternatives, right? So that's called both post decision business. Okay, and also depend on how important and how permanent this decision. If this decision is very important, then you will experience more post decision business more than if they are not important. For example, you know, for lunch, you want to eat Subway or you want to eat uh, Bob Evan, right? Like it's just lunch, right? And if you eat one place, you can go to another place next time, right? So that's okay. But if this friend just come here for one time to visit you and you didn't see the friend for what, 10 years? and you don't know when they will come back again next time. And this friend is very emphasized food. So you want to make sure you pick the right restaurant, the friend is happy forever, right? Or, you know, if you are going to marry that decision, marry whom, that'll be more important than if you just want to, what, 
by a cause, right? Okay, now the permanent. So also depend on how permanent you think this one. If this one is permanent, once you put in forever, like if you use permanent marker to write down something, then you be very careful because after you write, put it down, you cannot erase them. But if just pencil, it doesn't matter. You can just write down and then what? You can erase anytime you want. And I remember, I actually, I, I didn't use pencil that much before I came to America. But when after I come to America, I start use pencil. What? I don't trust my English. I believe I'm going to write something wrong. So I believe pencil will be perfect. I can erase anytime. And then interesting, I found American people actually like to use pencil. So make my change easier. And now actually I really still prefer pencil rather than pen. So that's interesting, right? Okay, and um, also, so this is permanent, you know, it means people make you feel like something you change, you decide you will never able to change back, okay? And this actually make your cognitive dis dissonance even um, higher level, right? So um, something the salesman like to use called low boarding. Low boarding is mean so because they they want to create that uh irrecoverability, right? So then for example if they if you buy the car they offer you a lower price, right? And then when you get a lower price you already think about oh well that's interest that's very good price. I think I can buy, I can afford it. So then you start to let that you test drive on the highway and you feel good and you start to image, well, now you can drive that to pick your friend, you know, pick your parents when they come to college to visit you. Well, you already have all this dream. Now, after, when you say, you, after you make the decision, they come back and say, oh my gosh, sorry, the price is wrong. Actually, that's different. Okay, now, are you going to buy it? Are you going to buy it, right? And last time in the class, I asked you, a lot of you, you guys said you won't buy it, right? Well, some people may not able to 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 just buy because they just love so much, right? So that's technical low bowling. Okay, so then at least three reasons why low bowling is working. Okay, here first say, because when you um, make decision, to buy this, right? And you already make some kind of commitment to yourself, right? So it's very hard, especially when the salesman so good they keep persuade you, then it's so hard for you to change your mind back, right? So you say, oh, I think I already said yes. How can I say no again, right? Of course, you can say by the way, but sometimes like, by the way, very hard to come out, right? The secondly, you feel uh, commitment to the things you are anticipate to happen, right? You say, I'm going to drive this car to pick my friend from airport, to pick my parents from airport. They'll be so proud of me. They'll be so excited about this car. You already make that pictures, and that's kind of make commitment in your end. So it makes it a little bit harder to make this to change, right? Okay, and so... <clears throat> Sometimes even, you know, maybe the final price is very different from the original they offer you. But then you say, well, it's just one time then. I can save money. I can spend money for this one. And I can just eat at home. I don't eat out. So I save some money later to make a difference of this. So after you make all these three adjustments, you're pretty much just going to, to, buy, to buy the stuff, right? Okay, how about um, friends? How about the friends? When is okay to lie to a friend, right? So, you know, you your friend, you know, find a good dress or you do the shopping together and your friends say, hey, how, how's this dress? And you say, uh, uh, you don't feel good, but then, looks like your friend really loved that. So you say, oh, fine, right? How about stealing? How about, 
you know, when you when you in the in the room and then you see your roommate have something, you say, oh, my friend's not here, but I really want that stuff. Can I just borrow? But then because you didn't tell them, so they can consider stealing, right? So um, how do you make decision for that? Okay, especially if you want if people behave immorally, that decision can be even harder, right? So um, for that, according to cognitive business theory, they really have to justify their action to find a way to minimize a negative aspect of action of their choice, choose, right? So um, they can think about something and say, well, it's just one time thing. I will I will return to my friend before before he or she come back to the room, right? So I'm just go to a party. I just borrow that clothes. I'll return. Say after they say, okay, let me try. I'm not stealing. I'm just borrow, right? Okay. Now, how about the you know cheating? Cheating is it's you know like in school a lot of student we all want to get a but then you just have a one part of the question you not sure and then you thought if i just have take a look at what my other classmate beside me do it i will get it right and then i will get it and just one time thing next time i'm going to study harder okay did you did it sounds familiar for some times right okay so did you see this chart? Okay, this chart, right? So the, the research show, for example, you have a uh, two people, okay, in the beginning, they may have a similar po point of view about the uh, cheating, right? So they are pretty much like here, they are the same position, but then one people do cheat, another one not cheat. Okay, so you see the second picture, you know, they start to, um. Their, their attitude about cheating start to change. And then finally, the end, you know, one person really cheat, another person didn't cheat. T totally different. When they talk about um, cheating, one person will say, well, it's not that big deal. Another one will say, um, well, they're totally wrong. Okay, so there's something in your hand out. They say this, you know, what happened? Two people, right? And once you do it, you more likely to change your mind, right? So that's something I remember when I, I, I think I told you the example, when I, when I, one time I did a presentation in Taiwan for the people, they just, they just get into administration position. Um, and I told them the most difficult po the position is how to say no when people ask you to, to drink alcohol. Okay, because there's some that's some kind of the the social activity people like to drink together so they have fun together. And if you not able to say no for the first drink in the beginning of your career, then people you you, you get a drink. Then they will start to ask you drink, 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 you know. Then you are not able, and then you will start to justify yourself. Well, it's just a couple of drinks, you know, it doesn't matter. But then before you know it, you maybe just become alcoholic. You know, this is just the example, but then I'm just saying the first step, if you want to write, okay, and then a lot of you still very young, make sure you make the right, right decision from beginning of your life so you don't regret later in your life, right? Okay. And they have some uh, example here, you know, Justin Miller, okay, major attitude of sixth grader toward cheating. Then, uh, then have them participate in comprehensive exam, give them a war, okay. And then the student arrange so that almost impossible to win without cheating. Okay, now. They make easy for students to cheat and create the things, you know, that, you know, say, you can kind of like cheat that nobody's going to detect you, okay? The next day, 
than students who have cheated because, you know, it's so easy to cheat, right? And then uh, they more like believe, you know, a cheating is okay. Okay, so that's evidence here. Um, you know, the, the cheating actually is something in our life every day you encounter some uh, temptation, cheat, cheat, cheating, right? And then here talk about actually um, this is also across culture, okay? Different culture, they are feel cognitive distance uh, for different reasons, okay? For collective culture, here say they feel cognitive distance. If they feel they are disappointed, shame, or disappoint others and experience, you know, see people can see them are cheating. So they actually are not feel sad themselves, actually feel distance because they are not perform the way their society want them to perform. Okay, so that is, is and then in individual culture will be more cognitive distance when you perform the way not match with your ex expectation, right? Okay, so um, this will be the second uh, source of distance. So I'm going to do here. Okay, so that is the, the first part of our um, lecture for this one. I'm going to take a, a pause here a little bit. So uh, we come back for the second video, okay? So any questions? Okay, so anyway, when you are listening for this, uh, just think about what this means to your life, okay? And then also remember when we in the class, I will be able to walk in the wrong and ask you and naturally that's the one I miss the most for this kind of lecture. So actually, um, I'm going to have this video and the next video, there will be 30 minutes each. But then uh, the end of this, you are, you are required to go to our uh, Moodle and then write down your discussion about, you know, which part of this lecture actually uh, you have a, what? You have a, a good insight and then you can even also give me example of what's that mean to you, okay? And that's kind of your attendance. So make sure you are going to do it. Okay. So I'm going to post this, uh, stop this video for right now. And you can take a few minutes break and come back for the next video. Okay. Bye-bye.